Brothers and sisters, good morning. Welcome to morning devotion. So we were reading on the book of Numbers before. We ended that one. So today we start on a new book. The first Timothy, first Timothy. So in the main service, we have started a new series. Talk about the four steps of feeling. So uh, last week we talked about uh, longing. Uh, I think that Timothy was a person with a great longing, and his spiritual father Paul was also a a great、uh, person with great longing. The two key people of the early church had such great longing, and that's why miracles and signs and wonders happen. First Timothy, what's the letter? So first、uh, Timothy is the f- one letter, and then second Timothy was another letter. So Paul wrote that at his late age to Timothy. So the second Timothy was kind of like last words of Paul. Paul knew that he was going to die in the prison, so that's why he wrote Second Timothy. But for the first Timothy, it was、uh, a letter written at his later age. So it happened when Timothy was sent to another church. So Paul missed Timothy very much. He didn't know what his successor, how he, his successor had been doing, but he got some good. Uh, bad news from、uh, from that church, so that's why he wrote a letter to Timothy. Timothy was not a teen; he was not a youth at that time. Probably、uh, Timothy was in his twenties, in his thirties. But Paul, as uh, Timothy's uh, spiritual father, really want to、uh, encourage his successor. So. Uh, Paul, uh, Timothy was in Ephesus. He faced many problems, maybe because he was younger than the elders in Ephesus. So that's why Paul told Timothy, "Do not let people look down on you because you are young. Even though you are younger than that person, the elder is still fine. You have such mission given to you." When we understand the book of Timothy, we must know the relationship between Paul and Timothy, and you must know who Timothy was. So I will let me tell you who Timothy was before I go into the scriptures. Timothy was born in、uh, Turkey. <coughs> He was a mixed. So his mother was a devout Christian. <coughs> they were Jews, but later on they became Christian. So his mother and his grandmother Eunice were famous. Oh, sorry, it's Eunice and Lois. That's his mother and his grandmother. But his father was a non-believing Greek. So Timothy grew up in the Jewish Christians, but he was not circumcised. So growing up,、uh, Timothy was in a, like a contradictory thing when he was when he was in Jews, when he was in the synagogue. The Jews think, "Oh no, you are not really a Jew, are you? If you are a Jew, you would have been circumcised. You are half the Jews." But when he was with his Greek friends, and then they said, "No, you are too Jewish. You read the Torah and observe Jewish law and regulations."
so once a Paul visited Timothy at his、uh, dwelling place. So、uh, Paul healed a crippled. And then there, Paul heard about Eunice and his son Timothy. Why Paul wanted to be a spiritual father, and why Timothy wanted to be Paul's spiritual son? Because Timothy longed for the, he was hung hungry for the word of God. Before Paul came to. Stay with him. He had prepared his heart. He was drawn by Paul's words, a、uh, Paul's life, and his spirit,、uh, signs and wonder attracted. Then Paul was willing to take Timothy with him on his missionary journey. Timothy was、uh, important. He was an intimate、uh, partner on Paul's second mission trip. There are six、uh, epistles in the New Testament written by Paul and Timothy. When we talk about Paul's epistles, actually half of it, where、uh, Timothy was involved in writing. When Timothy was kind of like mature, then Paul sent him to be overseer at Ephesus. And deal with a lot of heresies in、uh, Turkey. Today, the insight from God to us. The interaction between Paul, the last generation, and Timothy, the next generation. Both of them long to become spiritual fathers and son. They thirst for God's love and、uh, truth. So probably Timothy was the most successful second、uh, pastor kids of the history. Uh, Pastor Kids is not easy, but Timothy was a model for all of us,、uh, or for those who grew up in churches. And as cell leaders, we need to learn the heart and the mind of Paul to become a spiritual father. The title I will give today. To become the second generation who stands firm in the truth and love. To be the second generation who stand firm in the truth and in love. Ah,、uh, Paul, ah,、uh, Timothy is the next generation. So that's the title I will give to today. So verse one and two are the greeting of the letter. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope to Timothy, a true son in the faith. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. To Paul, Timothy was a true son in the faith. So he took Timothy to be his true son in Christ, and he blessed Timothy with his、uh, three blessings: grace, mercy, and peace. In all the letters Paul wrote to churches, or even to Titus. He only gave two blessings, grace and peace. But for Timothy, Paul gave one more, mercy. Because Paul received mercy, and、uh, we will know in the later stage.
So it's an intimate、um, greeting from Paul to Timothy. And then, second paragraph three to eleven, we must long for the truth. So there was、um, <clears throat> a problem with the Ephesian church because they charged other doctrine. Verse three: As I urged you when I went into Macedonia, remain in Ephesus that you may charge some that they teach no other doctrine, nor give heed to fables and endless genealogy which cause disputes rather than godly edifications which is in faith. Verse three and four. So actually, Paul was hoping to go to the east,、uh, westward,、uh, Macedonia, and and、uh, but for the east part, the Turkey, the Asia Minor. So Paul sent Timothy, the true son, to settle the situation. Uh, in the in that area, its main part is not to evangelize, but to、uh, build and root people in the truth. At that time, the truth was not firmly established. Yes, God's truth ever la-、uh, lasts forever. That's true, but. The doctrine must become the world as、uh, like accepted by the church. They 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 did not agree on the wordings they use. After Jesus ascended, uh, uh went back to heaven. Then, like two or three hundred years after that, then the actual truth was being written down in black and white. So at that time, early church they freely explain the truth. Just say whatever you are prompted to. And there are lots of fables and、uh, endless genealogy. So verse four, fables and endless genealogies. It talks about the contents of the Torah. At that time, some people really wanted to become teachers. Verse seven, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor the things which they affirm. Ah,、uh, some people wanted to have like a role to play in the church. I am one of the office in the fivefold ministry. So they try to explain the scripture the way they wanted it, but Paul say that they are guessing the scriptures. Verse four. This cause disputes rather than godly、uh, edifications. So okay, because they said it, and then people try to guess what the God's truth is about. So it doesn't cause any godly edification, which is in faith. It doesn't cause any godly edification. So it talks about the salvation, and verse five it clearly says here. As teachers, we must understand the truth. We must know that the purpose of the commandment is love. The purpose of the commandment is love, or the dest- purpose also means destination. When we read the scriptures, when we expound the scripture, 
our conclusion, our purpose, where we want to take them is about love. So love is agape. That's the highest level of love in Greek. Universal love. That's the derivatives of uh, Jesus' teaching. When uh, in the a Gospel of Matthew, Jesus was challenged by the scribes, by the te uh, teachers. What is the uh, summary of a commandment? And Jesus answered, there are two. One is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second one, love your neighbor as yourself. And this is the summary of the law and the prophets. So the law and the prophets uh, conclude the Old Testament. So this is uh, the command, uh, commenter say that it's double love commandments. Love God and love people. But you, when you love people, you also love yourself. If you do not love yourself, it's hard that you love your neighbors as yourself. So uh, Paul takes it a bit further. Verse 5, it's love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from sincere faith. When we read the Bible, we know that our purpose is to build up love. So what is love? So love originates from a love, a pure heart, a pure and simple heart, a good conscious. So conscious means our self-awareness of good and evil, and then from a sincere faith. In order to understand the Bible, how do we look, read the word of God with a correct perspective? Our hearts must be right. Our hearts must be pure and simple. We do not read the word of God with hidden agenda. And we must have faith in the word of God. But the people in Ephesus don't, didn't have such perspectives. They want to be promoted. That's why they say these things. But Paul taught uh, Timothy, what, you can say what you like, but after your, after your preaching, you must bring people to love. Brothers and sisters, so Paul has entrusted Paul, uh, uh, Timothy to long for the truth, to build love and life in truth. We need to take on this button, each of us. For the 2,000 years of uh, church history, the truth has been passed on one from the other one without defilement. And even if it has been defiled, it was corrected. Because some of the Christians have a pure heart, good conscience, and sincere faith. Paul, uh, Timothy was a full-time minister, a Levite. But at that time, the church didn't just allow the teacher, pastors to preach. The audience also has a responsibility and actually a position to receive the button of truth. We need to ask ourselves, do we long for the truth? So ask ourselves whether our truth will edify and build up people in love. As a cell leader, do you long to be filled by the God's truth when you hear a preaching? 
Uh, maybe you are a cell member or even no, not in a cell group. When you listen to the preach, do you long for God to speak to your life by the truth? How much love do we have? How we can accept God's love relates to how much truth he has received. So um, Timothy was someone who longed for the truth. Uh, Ephesians long for the truth, but they gone off track. But by the help of Timothy, they went back to the right track. So our Pastor Joshua is the last generation. We have the second, third, fourth generation under him. So Paul was writing to Timothy. Likewise, the scriptures speaking to us, whatever generation you are in, you must become one who long for the truth and you must be the one who preach the truth so that the love of God can be expound and shared. Verse 8 and 11 talk about the truth. We know that the law is good if one uses it lawfully. So in verse 9 and 10, Paul listed 14 sins. So he wrote that um, with bear in mind with the sins or situation of Ephesus. Verse uh, 10, fornicators, sodomites. Ephesus was under the influence of Greek. So for the Greek and the Roman culture, they didn't set a high standard on sex. In Greek culture, a male adult can have sex with a teens, a, a male teens. So Plato and Aristotle's the philosopher, they they also had sex with a younger man and the society did not condemn them. But the law is good. How is it good? To convict people, we can have discernment. When we see the tree of knowing good and evil and a tree of life, tree of good, knowing good and evil, God set it up for a good purpose. So because of the tree of, tree of knowing good and evil, we can go into the tree of life. So God, uh, Paul entrusts Timothy to pass on the good to others. Verse 11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust. So in verse 11, the key is committed and then verse 18 also have committed this charge I commit to you. So verse 18, so Paul uh, commits to Paul to wage the good warfare. God's uh, ministry is that God and committed to the last generation, the last generation commits to the next generation. It's the same for us today. Uh, the second paragraph, verse 12 to 17, long to become the models for others. Verse 12, Paul shared his own testimony. Verse 13, although I was formerly a blasphemer, a prosecutor, and an insolent man, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in the unbelief. Verse 15, to save sinners of whom I am chief. Verse 18, I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might show all long suffering.
as a pattern to those who are longing who are going to believe him for an everlasting life. So Paul talked about how bad, how terrible he was, and how he met the great lights of God, and now he's jealous and crazy for God. He has, he has talked about this so many times. Timothy has heard this so many times. Why is he still talking about it? God gives each vessel a unique life message. So Paul was like really strong personality. He he persecuted Christians with all his might. Then then when he was being turned around, then he was uh, doing everything for God with with Christ with all his might. He was quite an extreme character. So his life message from God to him was. Talk about how dark, how corrupt he was, but today I am zealous and passionate for God. Basically, the first and Timoth uh, second Timothy was uh, were written in the time of a uh, King Nero. So, Christian tradition believed that Paul in the time uh, died in the hand of Nero. So Paul knew that his time is up, but still he told Timothy, "This is my life message." But Timothy's life message was totally different. As Christian, second generation Christians, how he he was not that bad. He never killed anyone. He never set fire. Or sexually corrupt, he was not. So Timothy was another vessel, another flavor. But Paul highly regarded、uh, Timothy. Not everyone will have the mad story alive as the sec,、uh, the youngest son, uh, uh, to have such dramatic turnaround. You grew up in church. You were kind of like a good and obedient. A person, you didn't have a dramatic turnaround. You are still worthy to be used by God greatly. Ah,、uh, as a younger son, but he Paul chose a Christian second generation Christian to to pass on. This is the heart of God, brother and sisters. Do not belittle your testimony. Pastor Joshua, Pastor Ruby, Pastor Dino, they share the similar testimony every time. So Pastor Joshua talk about his life in Vancouver, so, and then Pastor Ruby talk about that holy twenty minutes, and then Dino was in North Korea, right? The most interesting will be his time in North Korea, and today he was still sharing the same message. Brother and sister, you wonder how come you don't have new testimonies? It seems like you don't, you did not encounter God again. No, that's not the case. That's his life message, core message. Doesn't mean that they have not met God again. It's same for Paul. Even when、uh, he was going to be killed by Nero, he was still talking about his point. The main thing is about example to others. Do you know your core life message today? You must highly regard your own life message. God has created you this vessel to have to carry this life message. On the day of your death, you share the same message. Just like Pastor Joshua, Pastor Ruby, they will become example for many, many, many. I especially want to encourage the youth growing up in church, or second generation Christians. You do not have the experience of how people were corrupt. And then when you say, "Oh, come on, share testimony," say, "No, I grew up in church. What can I do?" 
No, but your lives are important too. Do not let others look down on you because you are young. Your your life message, your attributes are important. And just like Timothy, you take on the baton of the gospel. We need to highly regard our life message. At the end of this uh, chapter, eighteen to twenty, this charge I commit to you. Son Timothy, according to the prophecy previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. So Timothy was the second generation, and and then through the prophecy, God said that you will take on that baton. And now God, a Paul, commit to you this charge, so that you may wage the good warfare. So, in order to receive the button, in order to birth the next generation, it's a warfare. Paul used a lot of the military and political terms in describing the gospels. So, in order to build the church, to you need to. Exercise your faith. You need to be valiant. So that's why it's like the warfare. But here, Paul say that you must have a、uh, having faith and a good conscience, which some having rejected concerning the faith have suffered shipwreck. So here, concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. That means that you experience shipwreck on your faith. That means you you sink in your faith. So he encouraged Timothy: you must have faith. You need to stand firm in the faith. Do not suffer shipwreck. The insights from this First、uh, Timothy chapter one to us is everyone we will take on the baton. So、uh, Pastor Joshua was is just like Paul. They received tree of life church. They have、uh, they share a lot of good value system to us. Now Pastor Joshua and Simo are still serving God, but when we talk about ever growing tree of life. The next generations, we must arise and take on the baton. Because Pastor Joshua and Simo keep committing to us, committing to us. It's not just for the curator staff, not just for the preacher, not just for the Levites. When you serve God in the marketplace, you must arise and take on the baton of tree of life. At work, in you must stand firm in love and truth. At, at your family, you must take on the take the baton of tree of life.、Um, however many Christians you have in your family, so God is telling us through the Scripture that you are the one who take on the baton. When God、uh, give you that baton, you need to exercise. And today, just like Paul was urging Timothy, we need to stand firm in the truth, have sincere faith, have faith, good conscience, and sincere faith, so that our life can become other people's example. May God bless His words. That's the end of our message today. Let's worship our God. Let's worship you in spirit and truth.
has entered into speaking in tongues and spiritual songs. Let us have truth from age to age. We can continue to preach the work of God. Yes, Lord, we praise you. We praise you. Because our life in you is with mercy. Your Lord, your salvation come upon our life. You grant us a lot of mercies. Let us come to you by faith. And we are under the name of Jesus. And we receive the truth. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your work in our life. Lord, we belong to you. Lord, we belong to you. Lord, we belong to you. Lord, thank you. When we are in darkness, And I once was a rebellious person, and I have a lot of chaotic relationship, and I didn't even see any hope, but you treat me with mercy, just like a great light shining in me and save me from the darkness. And now me and my family members can come to follow you, and you choose me as a Levite. Lord, this is so much mercy and grace that you have given me. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. Jesus, I thank you, praise you. In this generation, there are a lot of voices around us. Lord, a lot of voices. Whenever we wake up, awake, the voice, the noise of television, all the noise from conversations, the noise from news with different opinions. These all voices fill our ears. But Lord, today I thank you. Although this is a chaotic age, but you give us truth. You give us truth. This truth is the lamb and the light before our feet. This truth becomes the light of our life. And we no longer live in the chaos of the voices from people and world. Just like First Timothy today, it tells us that we have light. We have discernment. We can walk in God's will. Paul encourages Timothy, no matter in church, or some people speak something about other doctrine, but our heart has to desire the truth and stand firm in truth and love. And this passing on have to be on to the next generation. Brothers and sisters, I believe that you desire the words of God. God sees your heart. But if there are some times that you are so hot, you feel so hot to enter into the words of God, into the understanding and interpretation. And it's like that something block you that you can hardly understand the truth. And you listen to the truth, but you quickly forget. Just like it sleeps away very easily. Every time when you turn 
when you open the Bible, there are lots of disturbance, and you feel so troubled, and you cannot read on. Today, if it is you, I want you to pray at your seat, to pray for yourself. To remove all those things that block you to desire the words of God. Let us connect with God more. Today, Satan uses different ways and tactics to block us, to desire the truth. Only the truth from God that we can know the tactics from Satan. I have some prompting that some of you read a lot of things about your destiny. If it were you, it, it is you. I invite you to confess your sins to God. With fortune telling, and some of you are addicted to drama and this sins and the quote from the drama has become the quote of your life. This is not from God. You have to ask God to remove them from you. Some of the brothers and sisters, you read a lot of philosophy. This philosophy fill your heart and mind. This is not, this doesn't belong to God. And behind the philosophy, it's not of God. It's the voice of the world and their stock power that constrain us. If it is you, I invite you to confess your sins to God. Not only, conf not only confessing your sins and you also have to renounce it. All the good things that brought by, you have to renounce them. I also have prompting that the voice inside of you is louder than the voice of God. You remember deeply of some people who speaks words to you, but these words are not like Timothy, first Timothy, what they say. The purpose of them are not about love. And these words do not contribute to your life, but they bring oppression. Please remove them in front of God. Jesus, we thank you, praise you. Lord, we praise you, your love fuse us greatly today because of your truth has to bring us into love your truth is to build up our life in jesus name in jesus name i remove in our brothers and sisters that they worship other idols and they they read fortune tellers and the philosophy as they come before you and confess their sins, not only you forgive them and from their life, they have to remove all the root from this philosophy, this fortune telling, 
and the dark power behind them. The death power has to leave my brothers and sister and to the feet of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I take up the sword of Jesus to break off all Some brothers and sisters, you worship idols, activities, all the fortune telling, all the astrophobia, all the power, dark power that confuses, has to leave our brothers and sisters from their life. From their mind, you have to leave in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, I remove all. In brothers and sisters, their mind, all the sceneries from the drama, all the quotes, all the lines from the dramas that don't, don't belong to God. I command you to leave my brothers and sisters. This, all the quotes, the life quotes that don't belong to Jesus, you have to leave. I break off all the power from Satan, all the lies from Satan that work in our life that steal and kill has to leave my brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, let's stand and enter into spirit. Enter into our spirit to pray. She more, more, God. Give us more desires. Put more desire in our heart. We need to desire more your word to become our strength. Your word become our light to shine in our life. Jesus, we thank you. In verse 5, now the purpose of the commandment is love from a pure heart, from a good conscience, and from, good, from sincere faith. The purpose of the commandment is love. It's about truth. It's all about truth. The commandment, the purpose of the whole Bible is love. Lord, we praise you. Lord, your truth keeps on to stir in our heart and mind. Your truth to build us up. No matter in which circumstances, your truth let us to be strong and courageous and not fear about the lies of enemies and their work and their threatening from the enemy. Let us stand firm courageously and firmly. And defeat all the worldly things. Lord, we thank you. Today's Bible verses says we, every one of us is chosen by God because of the work of God and let God let us to have a life story just like Paul he is the chief of the sinner or Timothy he is the uh, second generation of the pastor kid just like pastor John coming back from uh, Canada to establish 611 and like Pastor Ruby, she also comes back only with decision in 20 minutes. So let's share two by two, share the greatest work in your life. In short, your life mes message, you got healed from sickness or in crisis, God saves you. Just in short, you share the great work of God. Just tell your life story and your life message.
Lord, thank you for your word. Lord, thank you for giving us the live message that we all have testimony. Brothers and sisters, let's stand. Let's give our great thanks to God. Let's tell God we have to follow God. We have to preach our life message and story to others. Jesus, we have to follow you. Jesus, we are willing to offer our life to you. We are willing to be your holy vessel, the vessel of love. Jesus, this is our prayer. Jesus, may you use us to become your vessel, to let your truth and love to preach. We know that every one of us are the next generation to receive your love and truth. And then we have to pass it on, just like Paul and Timothy. Just like in the Bible, everyone who belongs to you. Let's show the pictures of the tree of life. Our church is a tree of life church. God reveals the tree of life truth to us. Maybe we have already listened to a lot of truth, but still we don't treat it seriously. The nutrients, all the characters of the tree of life when your eyes fix on the fruit of the tree of life, their characteristics, you cry unto God, may God put all these good characteristics in our life. You put your hands and place your hands on your heart, you, your eyes fix your eyes on the tree of life. You tell God you have to become tree of life. I have to pass this on. I have to receive it and pass it on. to live out the truth. Forgive, embrace, gentle, and bear responsibility to accept yourselves, accept others. Kindness, passionate, to be stable emotionally, creative, freedom, patient and self-control. and benefit others. Jesus, you are tree of life. You let our church to become tree of life. Yes, Lord, we also need to be the tree of life and we are willing to receive and pass it on. Brothers and sisters, let's receive them and your spirit. Receive it in your, the spirit, in your spirit. God has to pass this truth and Love, pass it out. Receive this firmly. The, 
this is what God committed to us, com commits to us. Commits, God commits to pastors, every sellers, all the curative stuff, and all the brothers and sisters that in Tree of Life we have portion. This, this baton, we receive it. You, you pass this, you pass this stick to the back and pass it on. If you are the cell leaders in spirit, you pass it on to your cell members. If you still haven't become a cell leaders, you still pass this on to your relatives, you're willing to pass it on. You pass it on. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Lord, you're a good God. We are willing to become your vessel. We receive it in spirit and then we are willing to pass it on. In the tree of life from generation to generation, we pass it on. Lord, we thank you and praise you. Lord, thank you for loving us. Thank you for choosing us. Lord, we are willing to follow. And we are willing to give our life message to pass it on. In Jesus' name, I bless everyone, especially our next generation, no matter our biological children or spiritual when we are not able to live out the tree of life let us have the heart of paul no matter cell leaders or mothers how we receive the blessings from the first timothy let us become paul to teach our timothy and let timothy and our life to be testify and they align to be aligned with god in Tree of Life, they see the way out in their life. In Jesus' name, I bless everyone to receive the wisdom of Paul, to receive the life message of Paul, and let this life message to be stand up and rise and to bless and help our next generation. When they face difficulty, when they have to discern, let us have love and trust. Let us in you to teach and to pass it on. Thank you for listening to our prayer in Jesus' name. I bless everyone. This is the end of our morning devotion.